spider mites. If you've been growing house plants for a little while, it's likely you've had an encounter with our enemies, the spider mites. So what are spider mites and how do we get rid of them? Well, spider mites are a soft bodied sucking insect. Now there's a few different ways that you will notice spider mites on your plants. So how do we actually know we have spider mites? Number one, you may see actual webs kind of growing in and amongst your leaves. Typically where the leaves meet the stems is where the webs start to take place. Secondly, you may notice them with your bare eyes just kind of moving around on your leaves. Or thirdly, you may notice that the leaves actually turn yellow and fall off. And that is because these are sucking insects, which actually means they take their teeth and they actually lodge them into the leaves and suck that vitality out of the leaves. And what happens is the leaves will turn yellow and fall off and if untreated can really um, destroy the foliage on your plants entirely. However, it very rarely ends in actually killing the plant in total. Once, that, once those leaves are gone with time, uh, the plant can recover and regain its stature. However, that is very dependent on the type of plant. Now, before we get into actually treating spider mites, it should be noted that many times in our quest to become the best house plant parents possible, dust is actually mistaken as spider mites. So how do we keep that from happening? Well, number one, we have to be routinely checking in on our plants. I like to give a nice look at each and every one of my plants pretty much once a week to determine to make sure that they're still looking fine and healthy. If I do notice some irregular yellowing, I will pop out my handy dandy magnifying glass and I will take a deeper look at the individual leaves to see if there's any activity going on. If you care to be a good plant parent, pick one of these up. They're pretty cheap. I'll put a link down in the description below for you to get one. They're about $10 and they really do help you to identify those pests. Now, how do you determine if it's dust or if it's a spider mite? Spider mites move and it is actually very apparent. Once you see a spider mite, you will notice them scurrying about. They very rarely sit still for a, very, for a long period of time. So if you look at a leaf for 30 seconds and you don't see any movement, it's gonna be dust. And to further your understanding, spider mites do come in various different colors. Whites, yellows, reds, I've seen them all. And they do tend to affect certain plants more than others. Some plants in my experience that can be very badly affected by spider mites, things like desert rose or a denium, uh, citrus, plumerias, tropical hibiscus, alocasia. Those are all plants that I get spider mites on pretty routinely. And many times those plants can be right next to a philodendron or a pilea peppermioides. They can be infected and those plants nearby it don't get affected at all. Spider mites really have their targets and they will tend to stay on the plants that they prefer as hosts. So that's a good thing. So now that we know how to detect our spider mites, how do we treat them? First step, move your plants out of your houseplant jungles into a little prison cell. I like to use the bathtub, um, a bathtub that no one uses at this house. And I keep these here during the entire mitigation process. Now, once you have the right location, we'll remember that these are soft bodied insects. Now for soft bodied insects, I like to use what is called insecticidal soap. I like the brand Bonides. This is a very low key way to treat our spider mites, particularly if you have children or animals running around. This is a very safe option to use inside the house. All will be well. Now what the insecticidal soap will actually do is when you spray it onto those spider mites, it's going to clog the pores of your spider mites and it will actually cause them to suffocate and then they will essentially die on the spot. And the way to use the insecticidal soap is you need to spray it on the fronts and backs, tops and bottoms of every single leaf, ensuring that you really do get the backs of each leaf. I would recommend using gloves if you don't wanna get your hands covered with insecticidal soap. I forgot mine and that's okay. So the key is to get the tops and the backs of every leaf because these little guys can be hiding anywhere. Now the key is to do this every day over the course of five to seven days for a few reasons. Number one, you wanna ensure that you get them all. It's very unlikely that you'll get them all on that first shot. Secondly, 
that first day that you may be spraying, there may be some eggs that they had laid previously that were unaffected by the insecticidal soap. So you need to allow for them to have a chance to open up and birth before you can spray those and then kill those spider mites as well. And over the course of about five to seven days, we'll typically allow you to get all of them and any future generations at the same time. So that is absolutely key. Now the good news is that spider mites are one of the easiest pests to get rid of. It only takes a little bit of effort over the course of a few days and then with that treatment you can bring them back into your house plant jungles or your display areas of your home and rest assured that they're not going to be infecting other plants or losing more foliage themselves. So with that, now you are ready to take on any spider mite invasions that come your way. If you do have any other further questions or comments, definitely leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer each and every one of those. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We're bringing new plant related content every single week so that we can all become better plant parents. Thank you guys for joining me here on Plant Vibrations. I'll catch you soon. Ciao.